Good afternoon everyone, my name is Madeline Robinson and today I'll be discussing my paper on the Neolithic temples of Malta. The Maltese temples are among the oldest examples of prehistoric architecture, yet the construction of their roofs remains a mystery. The absence of any roofs or roofing material at the temple sites has resulted in conjecture regarding the original appearance of these megalithic structures. What I'll be discussing today is how and why I use LIDAR and photogrammetry derived 3D models to provide a partial temple roof reconstruction that has its design entirely based on contemporaneous archaeology. So where is Malta? Malta is a tiny archipelago in the Mediterranean, 96 k south of Sicily and about 300 k north of Africa. The main island is Malta, which is neighboured by the islands Gozo and Camino, as well as a number of smaller unoccupied islands. The Neolithic temples of Malta date from around 5600 to 4500 BP and are the oldest still standing monuments on record, yet a surprising number of them have survived. The images here are examples of the photogrammetry models I made using three DSLRs. I used a focal length of around 90 mm an f-stop of 5, and monopods for aerial shots. The images shown here are examples of the individual temple components which make up the larger complexes. As you can see in these models, the consistent shared feature is the absence of any roof. No apparent roof material has been found scattered around or collapsed within the temples, nor is there sign of obvious damage within the walls to indicate that the roofs collapse inside. Therefore, the form of the roofs have been a matter of some debate. The temples themselves are spread around the two main islands of Malta and Gozo, but today I'll be focusing on two of the four main complexes called Emnidra, which is located down south here, and Taishin, which is a bit further northeast. So my aim here for this project is to design a partial roof reconstruction of the Amnidra and Taishin temples that is entirely based on the archaeological evidence available using 3D imaging. So what archaeological evidence do we have? The most valuable and informative indications of prehistoric Maltese roof architecture are found here, in the Neolithic burial complex, the Hypogeum of House Sefliani an underground labyrinth of rock-cut tombs located near the Taishin Temple in southeast Malta. This is an aerial view of the LiDAR model of the second level of the Hypogeum, lent me to me by Malta Heritage so I could conduct this research. Zooming into the model, there are two chambers that are of particular interest. Two rock-cut rooms in a Hypogeum have been decorated with detailed carvings of a roofing structural system. What is more interesting is that it also shows consistent architecture with the remains of the above ground temples, here and here. This can be seen better on the inside. Within the middle level of the hypogeum, these two rock cut chamber entrances are bordered with ornamental carvings. In both the Holy of Holies and the adjoining chamber entrance to the main room, the distinct imprint of a structural system can be seen. What is bordering the portals is what is crucial here, the trilithon entrance. The trilithon entrance, which is two uprights with a capping stone, is configured here within a greater design of a box entrance, so essentially this. The architectural design for their portals consists of four uprights that are boxed together by a thick slab on top, the central portal neighboured by two false windows, and the portal itself is capped by a lintel beam. Now this can be seen in the temples. Shown here in the photogrammetry models of the Amnija Central and Southern Temples and the Tarshin Central and Eastern Temples, the remains exhibit the box entrance design. All the complexes, excepting the oldest Gigantia, indicate that this structural design was employed for their inner passageways. The trilithon entrance and the box entrance is the key linking architectural feature that allows for a reconstruction with certainty. The optimal conditions of the Amnija and Taishin temples, however, means I could build a reconstruction by merging the LIDAR and the photogrammetry models together. It's not just the hypogeum or the temples that exhibit this architectural design. There are a few surviving pieces of archaeological evidence depicting the temples and the use of the trilithon box structure. The first here is the Amjar model a small carved limestone model of a single cell temple found at the site of the Temple of Amjar. It is ovoid in shape, exhibiting a trilithon entrance within a box structure, roofed with what appears to be seven long horizontal beams. 
Another piece is found on the inside of the outer left upright of the box structure in the central temple of Amnidra. Depicted very, very clearly is a carving of the trilithon entrance embedded within a box structure. What is crucial here is that it shows the original in engineering above the box entrance. Three long beams are positioned above a shorter lintel beam. This is very similar to the carving of the facade in the Holy of Holies in the Hypogeum of House Eflieni. This is further evidence that the carvings in the Hypogeum were what the temples originally looked like. The 2.5 cm long carved greenstone amulet found at Tarshian shows the temple facade depicting a trilithon entrance and box structure. There's also a graffiti on a slab found at the Scorpa temples, northwest Malta, which shows two impressions of a temple facade, one finished, the other incomplete. The complete carving again shows the same box structure. In order to do the reconstruction, I had to go to Malta and I took thousands of photographs of the temples and processed them remotely using a network of five high performance Windows OS nodes, which were actually located at the University of Sydney. I used Agisoft's Photoscan Pro version 1.2 as Metashape actually hadn't been created yet. Images were assessed using the image quality tool in Photoscan Pro and any photographs with a value less than 0.5 were not included in the models. This was just to ensure that only good quality high res photographs were used to make the models. Reconstruction parameters were tailored to individual models based on processing time, effect on depth, picture quality and number of cameras, which are summarized in the table featured. All three models were of sufficient resolution and fidelity to allow for a detailed assessment of the structural engineering of the temples and any superficial markings on the stones. Unfortunately, I did run into a computational error with the southern temple of Amnidra, which produced an incorrect flying altitude resulting in incorrect ground resolution and ground coverage estimates. Uh, that was due to merging several chunks together. However, this error didn't affect the usefulness of the Amnidra Southern model for determining its architectural features. The CAD software Geomagic Control was used to explore the LiDAR model of the Hypergeum, with attention focusing primarily on the car facades within the Holy of Holies and the main room. The photogrammetry models of the Amnidra and Tarshian complexes were then uploaded into Geomagic in an OBJ format, and both the hypergeum chambers were modelled onto each temple photogrammetry model. This was done to confirm structural consistency, gain an understanding of the original ceiling architecture and provide a template for the reconstruction. The overlaid models exhibit how cleanly the box structures of the hypergeum carvings fit onto the temple's inner box structure passageways, thus providing the beginnings of a roof structure. Superimposing the hypergeum lighter onto the three uh, photogrammetry models provided the foundation of the new roof reconstruction. The proposal therefore consists of a base lintel beam positioned between two outer uprights and a series of long curved corbel beams on top of the box structure. Each beam extending further forward but out past the previous one to define and reduce the space of the central axis of the temple. Without going into too much depth regarding the engineering analysis, the primary concern was figuring out the dimensions of the corbelled ceiling and whether this was structurally sound with the measurements of each individual temple box entrance. To calculate the degree of overhang for each reconstruction, two considerations had to be made. If the reconstruction has no counterbalance and was completely balanced in what is called a harmonic stack, the degree of overhang is simply determined using this equation here, where the length of overhang is dependent on the number, n, of corbelled levels and the uniformity of the block depths. Alternatively, if, this was, if there was a counterbalance of limestone slabs or more likely of infill packed behind and on top of the roof to stabilize the structure, the maximum overhang length could be considerably larger. As we have no way of identifying what may have been used to counterbalance the corbelled beams by how much or if they did at all, this can't be calculated using the standard means of the equation for a counterbalance. So the safest amount of corbelling overhang for the reconstruction is therefore the harmonic stack, giving the minimum overhang possible for balanced beams with or without uh, counterbalancing. With the design and positioning of the roof supports established, 
Each temple case study was scrutinized in both mesh and textured formats to, to locate any grooves or markings on the extant blocks, which indicate locations of the support beams and lintels previously fitted onto the temple's walls and upright slabs. These indications of previous construction were measured, along with the remaining temple structure and the hypogeum's carvings, to determine the appropriate dimensions of the reconstruction. Once completed, a representation of the new roof structure was digitally drawn onto stills of the temple models using Adobe Photoshop. Amnijah's central temple's inner connecting passageway from cell A to cell B is where the reconstruction was positioned. This location was optimal due to its consistency with the car facades of the hypogeum, its great st state of preservation, and important in engineering clues. The most crucial feature exhibited within M. Niger Central is the carving on the side of the upright detailing the original appearance of the inner passageway. As the carving depicts three beams on top of the base lintel beam, the reconstruction from Niger Central included the same. Like M. Niger Central, the inner connecting passageway of M. Niger Southern was where the reconstruction was configured, containing the remains of the box entrance structure. In this site, the lower lintel slab of the trilithon doorway has survived. As such, a base slab was positioned on top, connecting the outer uprights and completing the box structure. Unfortunately, erosion has destroyed much of the top region of the temple. The left outer upright, however, does exhibit some indication of a square groove marking where a beam may once have been positioned. Due to the larger size of the southern temple, this design only had two corbel beams above the lintel base. Uh, this is very consistent with what is shown in the main room within the hypogeum. The second passageway within Tarshin Central was chosen to position the proposed reconstruction simply because the top of the temple could be successfully modelled, unlike the main passageway into the temple. Whilst Tarshin is a structurally consistent temple, it has suffered from recent renovations that have altered the original appearance of the slabs, reducing the intasis, replacing with slabs of a more cubic design. Fortunately, however, original groove marks have survived in Tarshin Central, indicating original construction. The grooves are in the, sim in the same place as the Amnijah Central and Southern Temples and are similar in shape. Again, this suggests that the base lintel slab was fitted here as a locking lintel beam. The dimensions of the box structure of Tarshin Central, out of the three different box structures analysed, is the most dimensionally consistent with what is represented in the carving of the Holy of Holies, which also exhibits two corbel beams. Their similarity makes a visualization of the reconstruction comparably easy using images of both structures. The reconstructions therefore look very similar to what is portrayed in the hypogeum. Through the applications of photogrammetry and digital 3D modeling, a new roof reconstruction proposal has been created derived entirely from the remaining archeological depictions of the original architecture, which as you can see here, I've been able to 3D print and recreate by hand. Matching the LiDAR imagery of the two chambers in the hypogeum onto the photogrammetry models of the Amnidra and Tarshan temples has verified their structural consistency. This process has consequently produced a new archaeologically defensible roof reconstruction proposal for the Neolithic temples of Malta. Further research that I've looked into, but not in this particular paper, is roofing material and whether timber was a possible resource as well as the limestone that you see in the foundations. The results of this method produce reconstructions comprising of a series of corbelled curved beams that extend out towards the centre of the room. The, the long distinctly curved beams that comprise the majority of the reconstruction pose a problem if assumed to be limestone, as the archaeological record of Neolithic Malta is not irrefutably in support of just a limestone roof. There are no remains of any roof material at any of the temple sites. There are no records of fragmented or displaced huge limestone slabs in any stratigraphic layers within the temples when they were first excavated. And this reconstruction unfortunately does depend on large material. Palynological records show fluctuating levels of pine and oak trees. However, there has been ongoing fierce debates regarding the employment of timber in the Neolithic temples of Malta. Timber does, however, solve the issue of the concave, concave nature of the major beams in the roof reconstruction. Other areas of research that I've looked into um, are possible engineering that was used to cover the entire, apse, uh, the entire apses of the temples and how structurally sound the engineering would be for either timber or stone roofing. So that's it. 
Thank you so much for listening. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to contact me at madeline.robinson at sydney.edu.au or do check out my photogrammetry models of the temples uh, plus a few other archaeological sites and artifacts from around the world on my Sketchfab page. Um, but cheers. Thanks, everyone. I hope you've got some questions.